Welcome back. So let's dive in a little bit to relative age, shall we? <clears throat> so let's first take a look at a, a, an outcrop of a rock. So a rock outcrop is just kind of a little part section of some layers of rock that's kind of sticking out that we can study. So all of these, uh, you know, are different layers of rocks. So um, let me see here. What can I do? Oh, let's try this. Uh, oh my, things went awry real quick. Sorry about that. So the question I have is, of these layers of rock, which layer was laid down first? Therefore, which layer of rock is the oldest? Just looking at these, all right? So let me give you an example. All right, so this layer of rock was laid down, and that one was laid down, and that one was laid down. So if this, if these boxes, which one was laid down first? Well, the one down here, one at the bottom. So which one of these is the oldest? Which one has been here the longest? The one at the bottom. That simple principle leads us is the beginning of relative age dating. So in this case, if we're looking at these layers of rocks, you want to know which one the oldest one is? Oh, it's the one at the bottom. So for instance, you're at the Grand Canyon. You're looking at all the layers of the Grand Canyon. Where are the oldest rocks? The bottom. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes plate tectonics occur, things happen, and layers get shifted and flipped upside down. So we need a little bit more investigation. But in general, in general, we're looking at layers of rock, uh, especially this type of rock, sedimentary rocks. The oldest rocks, well, down at the bottom. Now that happens most of the time. There are things that occur that could cause the bottom rocks to not be the oldest. Tectonics, volcanoes, material bubbling up from the depths of the earth. So, a number of different scenarios. But for the most part, the oldest rocks are at the bottom. So to figure out stuff like relative age dating, you need to know uh, about, uh, you need to know a few things. And the first few things to figure out are the different types of rocks. So first off, there one type of rock is called sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock are made up of pieces of sediment, which are small particles of sand, pebbles, or other material that accumulates in horizontal layers and over a long period of time gets squished and compacted together and hardens into rock. So you take some sand, imagine beach sand. If I dumped a pile of beach sand, it would kind of, on my arm here, it would kind of lay out flat, and then imagine another layer of sediment, another layer of sediment, another layer of sediment, and so on and so forth. As you build up more and more sediment, the stuff towards the bottom is getting squeezed and compressed together, and that hardens and turns into rock. We'll talk more about sedimentary rocks in a later unit, but that's generally how they form in these kind of horizontal layers. So okay, here are a number of different sedimentary rock layers. Um, other rocks form in layers, but sedimentary rocks kind of form in, in these nice, neat layers. So that's one type of rock. So just knowing a little bit how they form uh, can help with relative age dating. Another thing to think about are igneous rocks, the second type of rock. Uh, it's formed when hot liquid magma or lava cools and hardens either below Earth's surface or on top of Earth's surface. We'll get more into this in a later unit. But as far as relative age dating is concerned, sometimes we might have these layers of rock, and all of a sudden this magma comes up, starts breaking through these layers of the crust that are already there, and then cools and hardens and becomes rock. So, and sometimes that material is on the, the, the bottom. So don't get tripped up. It's not always the bottom as the oldest rocks, just usually. But sometimes these rocks come cut through the layers. Sometimes they, this magma stops in the middle of the crust, cools and hardens. Sometimes it cuts all the way through to the surface and erupts as lava and forming rocks right on the surface. A uh, great example of some igneous rocks. This is uh, a big chunk of an igneous rock called granite. This is actually a big blob of magma that cooled below ground, but now it's above ground. So how did it get there? Well, if this stuff formed below ground, but now it's above ground, it must have got pushed up somehow. So that's um, igneous rock that cooled below the surface. Here's igneous rock that cooled on top of the surface. 
Back here is a type of volcano that erupted some lava. That lava flowed out, cooled, created rocks on the surface. This is actually in Arizona. This is actually just outside of Flagstaff. You would think maybe Hawaii or something like that. Nope. So we have sedimentary rocks formed by layers of sediment, kind of settling horizontally, getting compacted and turning into sedimentary rock. Igneous rock formed from cooled magma or lava. And then we have metamorphic rock. These rocks form deep underground where an existing rock is changed due to heat and pressure. Uh, metamorph, to morph, to change an existing rock. So when you apply a little heat and pressure, due to plate tectonics, maybe there's a subduction zone, this material starts to go down. Before it melts, it, if, it, if it gets too far into the earth, it will melt, become an igneous, uh, or become magma all over again, could be potentially an igneous rock. But before that, um, rocks that already exist, um, if they do get pushed underground due to heat and pressure, they can change, they can morph. So we get metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks, again, another unit later in the semester, are just crazy looking. They're beautiful rock, they're interesting, they're weird rocks. Here's an example of a metamorphic rock. So uh, this type of rock exists because somehow heat and or pressure was applied to an existing rock to change uh, the previous rock. So knowing these three different types of rocks will help with relative age dating. You'll see why in a moment. <clears throat> also a couple of things to know if you're trying to relatively date things are sometimes there's sometimes there's missing stuff. We call that an unconformity. These are missing rock layers, there's a gap in time, a change in process, something happened and there's material gone, or something happened and the processes of rock formation changed. So something weird. So unconformities are, are these weird things that occur in a geologic rock record. If I'm looking at an outcrop, that shows us a change in process or missing information. So here is a, a good example of an unconformity. So we have all these layers of rocks kind of folded up, just folded up like a piece of paper. For reference, that's a person down there. So these are huge folds in rocks. More on that in a later unit. But if we look above it, above these folds, there's all these flat layers of uh, looks like a sedimentary rock. So I got folded layers, and it looks like the top of it was kind of just cut off, and then these flat layers kind of deposited on top. Well, that's an unconformity. There's missing information. Something weird happened. So we got these these layers of rock folded up. And then it looks like something kind of came along and kind of just ground down the top of it and put new layers of rock on top. Okay, that's an unconformity. Something weird happened. There, there's a change in process that occurred. It went from some rocks being compressed and folded up to all of a sudden new rock forming nice horizontal layers on top. And one last thing when we're relatively dating rocks and rock outcrops is something called a zone of contact metamorphism. Kind of goes back to both igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks. Uh, a zone of contact metamorphism is where rock edges are burnt and changed by magma. So you have layers of rock, you have this hot magma coming up. As this hot magma is coming up and cutting through these rock layers, along the edges of that magma intrusion, the magma is so hot it alters the rock it's cutting through. It just on the outsides of it, uh, the outsides of this magma intrusion, it alters the, the rock that it's kind of cutting through. Just just in close proximity to uh, to this magma intrusion, stuff that's in contact with it. Here's an example. This is uh, an igneous intrusion as it cut through these rock layers. And you can see kind of just above and below how the rocks are a little bit different color. This hill, for the most, most part, is kind of like a, this beigeish color. But you get this black igneous magma intrusion cutting through. And above and below, you get this change in color, which is a great indication of contact metamorphism. Because just these parts were in contact with this hot magma as it cut through before it cooled. It actually altered these rocks a little bit. So we're going to need that magma intrusion, and then just above and just below you get this change uh, of these rocks, oftentimes seen uh, in a color change. I know that seemed like a lot of random stuff thrown at you, but 
just having a basic understanding of the types of rocks, unconformities that weird things happen, and this idea of zone of contact metamorphism, you can look at something like this and figure out what happened oldest to youngest. You can tell a whole hell of a lot of geology just based on slight knowledge of types of rocks, a few processes, and you can look at a rock outcrop and then just figure out from oldest to youngest what happened. There's a lot of power in that. We don't need to know exactly the names of these rocks. We don't need to know exactly the, the absolute age or even the geologic age. We can just look relative to one another and we can come up with a, a pretty, good, pretty good idea. Um, so that's uh, actually what we're going to do when we come back. So let's pause here. When we come back, we'll break this down, oldest to youngest, and uh, figure out how to put things in relative age order. I'll see you back here in just a second.